All right. Okay, so hello, my name is Kareem Ray. I am the founder of One Soccer Nation. Our objective is to help aspiring soccer players to achieve success in the beautiful game we both love. Today we are here with Jose. He is a Canadian. Uh, no, he, he's playing professionally in the Canadian Premier League. He plays for Valor FC. Am I saying that properly? Valor? Uh, I'm not the one to correct you, uh, to correct our Canadian. <laughs> Being a Spanish with my accent, but yeah, it's a Valor, Valor right. FC, so yeah. <laughs> no Something worries. like that. But Jose, please introduce yourself to the viewers. Yeah, I'm a Spanish footballer. Um, right now I'm 35 years old. Um, I'm Atletico Madrid former player. Um, uh, I play in different uh, teams in Spain. The most known teams are Atletico Madrid and Unión Deportiva Almería. Uh, in La Liga, they used to play in La Liga, both of them. Still Atletico Madrid is in La Liga, Almería is in second division. And then in 2011, I started to play abroad and I play in different countries, you know, total counting a span of 13 countries. So yeah, I've been playing all over the, the world from 2011 until today, 2021. So it's 10 years in a row playing abroad. So yeah, and this is my third season here in the CPL playing for Valor. So I'm happy to be here involved in Canadian soccer. I'm really happy to, to be part of this league that it was created just three years ago. So I was even in the first year of the CPL. I'm still here, so with the same motivation. So I'm happy, happy to be here. I'm happy to stay in, in your in your YouTube channel and with you in this interview. Thank you, thank you, and congratulations on on signing professionally in the CPL. Uh, we're gonna dive in, into the CPL a little bit later on. But Jose, please, uh, you know you've been playing for ten years. So can you take us back in time to where it all began for you with uh, football? Yeah, I mean, professionally, I play in 17 years, actually. I'm playing since oh, wow. I'm 17 years old uh, for Atletico Madrid. I started to be professional. So this will be my 18th season as professional. But all started when I was eight years old. And my brother, three, or year, three years older than me, started to play in a team called San Lorenzo in my hometown in Leon. I started to love the game um, from... Early 80s, I was selected for national team and province um, selections. And I think pretty young, I, I understand, I put in my mind, I wanted to be professional. Probably in the age of 14, 15 years old, when I was called by uh, La Liga teams, their academies like Valencia or Villarreal or Valladolid, uh, they called me for their youth uh, academies. Um, I think, yeah, it was pretty young, but I already was clear in my mind what is my, my aim, my objective to, be, to become professional. Um, and hopefully and thankfully I, I, I did it and still doing it. So I'm very grateful what uh, football or soccer, as you say, they brought to, to me and helped me a lot all this way. Yeah. And, you know, what sacrifices did you and your family make for soccer? Well, a lot. This is the uh, ugly part that nobody sees, no? Uh, when see, people see the sportmen or footballers, they just see the, the other side, but this is the, the, the side that makes you, after make you uh, succeed, you know? The part that nobody sees. And that part involves, in my, in my case, for example, not to drink, not to smoke, not to uh, go out uh, with my friends, uh, in the times like weekends, all my friends, especially in those ages, no, from 16, I don't know, to, to 30 years old, everybody on the weekends um, go out and, and you, because you're responsible and you want to succeed in football, you just stay at home and um, try to, to, you know, take care of your body, eating properly and, and going to bed early, even if it's a Friday night or Saturday. And this is the difficult part, no? To to knowing that your friends are out there and you know the stories and they are outside and you still stay at home because it's necessary. I mean, I've been uh, or I'm friend of a lot of players who are at that age of 20, 
19, 24, they were not taking care. And maybe on that time, they, you cannot feel it because you're still young, but most of those players are 20, I don't know, eight or 27, 30 maximum. Maybe they retire and, and you, get, you get the your reward later on. In my, in my case, I always say that I feel better physically, for example, from my 30s than before that. Um, and I think that's the reward of taking care of your body um, um, and not going out, not doing other things that you should do maybe for your age. But again, as you asked me, those sacrifice uh, the end pay off. Yeah, of course. And uh, you said you were 14 when you signed your first professional contract? No, actually I was 15 and I was called by these teams, but uh, my hometown team didn't let me go. Yeah. because they wanted to become like really, really professional. It was like disappointing for that age. You looking forward for 15 years old. But then um, a guy on the board of this team, they promised me in, if in two years, this hometown team don't go to the first division in La Liga, we promise you that we let you go. And they, full, they, they keep their promise. After two years, they didn't promote the first division, the professional team. So after two years, they allowed me to go. And then with 17 years old, I signed my first professional contact with Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid, wow. And, uh, you know, being 17, signing at s such a young age, how did you feel, like, feeling-wise and in your mind, how did, it, how did it feel? I would say that probably is one of the best days of my career when I entered in the, ex in the stadium Vicente Calderon. Uh, now it's Wanda, but on that time they... They moved from a stadium Atletico Madrid two years ago. Um, but entering those offices in that stadium, big stadium, huge, that I just watched on TV for a big team like Atletico Madrid, um, it was a huge step for me. And it was I was so happy because it's what everything I fought for and so many hours for my family, for myself, since I was, I don't know, that eight, eight years old, playing every single day, no, not only in the training uh, with my team, it's, also in the street, so many hours playing with uh, bigger players, uh, stronger players. Um, and that time you say, okay, that's now I'm near or closest to my to my aim or to my objective to, to become professional. And even after I had so many experiences at professional level, probably I will show I will choose that day, signing for Antonio Madrid as probably the happiest day of, of my professional career. Nice. That's amazing. And at that time, being 17, did you have an agent to help you with the signing process, negotiating the contract and the deal? Yeah, actually, um, on that time, the, since I was 14, 15 years old, agents start to call you, start to want to work with you. They try to give you away a pair of boots or something. They cannot uh, just to you, you sign with them. And at the end, one guy I knew because he was ex-former player of this hometown of my, of the team of my hometown. Uh, he was an agent, he became an agent after he retired. Um, and he, I signed with him in Atletico Madrid. Um, still, we have good memories. Um, and again, uh, he helped me all the way after I, I, I changed the agent, but he's still our friend. Yeah. So he helped me because on that time, on, at that age, you don't know what's going on, how it's about to sign a contract. My parents were involved in football as well. So he helped me, he helped me to, all these things about contrast and that I never seen before that time. Yeah, and you know, what's the difference now? Do you, did you still have an agent to help you get into the CPL or did you just do it by yourself because of your profile and how many professional teams you've played with and how many different countries you played with? Yeah, it's, it's a long time that I don't have a proper agent like someone signed, but I was with some agents I know from all this way um, and they trust on me and I trust on them. So they know that if they get me something, they will get their commission and everything. Um, I always work like this, but I'm not a proper agent right now that I sign, I have exclusivity with them. What is true is that, for example, they have, I don't know, one agent who works only in USA or one is Mexican, who works only in Mexico or not in this. I, I just try to respect him. If for somebody work with this Mexican, I try not to speak with anybody else in that market. But it's difficult for an agent to work in 
all the markets, especially for me that I play in so many different countries. So they understand my situation and they understand I don't want to sign an exclusivity with that because that will close a little bit my, my you know, oh. my, my possibilities, you know, so yes. of playing in another part of the world. So normally I did like this and they respect that. I, I being very honest with the agents who contacted me uh, about, about that. And be, from the first day I said, okay, you can work on me in this, in this, if, if we speak and I, we like what, what, or I like what I, what I listen, but I, I never lied to them. So saying like, yeah, you can find or try to find me something, but uh, you need to trust on me and I to trust on you because normally it's nothing, nothing signed until the moment we sign a, or we get a, a real offer. Yeah. Yeah. Jose, I really respect that. It's, you just said it's about honesty properly communicating to your agent, letting them your situation. And not only that, did you not just, you didn't even sign with them. You told them your situation and then they were still able to, they're still willing to work with you. And you know, the reason why you didn't sign wasn't, is to keep all the doors open, which I totally understand. And I really respect that I want to say. Um, am, I, am I hitting the points? Am I on the right, right page with you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, in the beginning, sometimes they have doubts about this, but now, especially with the agents I'm in contact with several years, they know me. I have never had a problem with an agent about paying a commission. I always pay my 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 debts, my commission. They, 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 of course, they are agents. They are there is their job. They deserve that. Especially, they get me a contract. Um, um, and they're okay with that. They know I like to move, especially before I like to move in different places, different countries, different continents. And they respect that as well. And if not, uh, the, the agents who are not able to respect that, I'm okay. It's nothing, nothing bad. I understand they want to work in another uh, different way. I respect them. Uh, okay, goodbye, good luck. And nothing bad, of course. I totally understand also if there is some agent I'm for sure uh, I found some of my way that didn't want to work on that way. They just wanted to sign up a contract with me for one, two years. But I said, I'm not working like this, so it's, it's all fine. So yeah, it's yeah. my way. And so far I can complain how, how it went. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so can you repeat again, how many, how many different countries did you play in? Well, I play 13, yeah, I play, so when I, I played in Almeria then uh, in 2010, then I went to 2011, I went to Thailand, then Indonesia, from Indonesia to Austria. Austria, I signed from Austria to Jordan. Um, I have to, to think now, I don't know. from Jordan to, to Cyprus, Cyprus to Romania, Romania to, to Indonesia again where I play two different years. Then I play in Finland. Then I play in Spain again. I Then Andorra, from Andorra to Hong Kong. Hong Kong to Qatar, Qatar to Saudi Arabia. And to Saudi Ar from Saudi Arabia to Canada in 2019. It was, it was. That's a lot of, a lot so, of yeah, it's a, a long journey. So, so different places. Uh, and this year actually, I was kind of alone in Spain for six months after a season in Canada it was only until October this time. So I said, I cannot stop. And when they asked me, I said, I prefer not to have holidays. I will have plenty of holidays when I retire. So we spoke with the club and with my club here with, with Balor and they were okay with me going alone to Spain. So I went there to play in second division B uh, now until April. So I just came back like one month ago. Wow, yeah, that's a, a lot of life experience um, the, with soccer, that's amazing. So, okay, my, my, my next question is, did you, did you do anything differently to get where you, where you wanted to go or was it a straight road? Oh, no, not at all, not at all. It was actually, you asked me when I was in Almeria, for example, that I was gonna play in 13 different countries. I was going to be the Spaniard, renowned the Spanish player who played most countries, uh, you know, from all the Spanish players. Uh, that's my only record, probably my only <laughs> good record in my football career. But I'm okay. Yeah, I mean, at the end, I just wanted to play professional soccer. I don't mind the place. I don't know. I don't mind where. 
I am just looking for first division places all over the, the planet. And I start to enjoy it. Um, sometimes I wanted to change to find a different place which maybe fits better for you. You always try to, in my case, I always try to find the perfect place where the sport life is perfect, the economy is good, and uh, outside the football also is good, but it's impossible to find. There's always pros and bad things, you know? There are always good things and, and no and negative things you can say from every country, every place. So at the end, you stop looking or seeking that perfect place. And now I, I prefer to settle. And maybe I found here in Canada, you know, it's uh, my wife, my, my daughter, uh was born here also and we are very happy and i got some options to play in different countries um but when you're happy and, and your family is happy i moved too too many times so now it's time to maybe to settle down um you never know in football maybe i, I change again but right now i'm happy and that's all uh, it's all about being happy right so yeah with your soccer life and with your uh, other part of your life nice <laughs> I like, you seem very um, happy where you are right now, which is really good. And I like the fact that you showed, you know, it's not only about soccer, but it's all about, per it's about personal life too. There's two sides that you have to, you know, balance. I like that. Um, exactly. No, sorry, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 you make the point. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with you because at the end you train, I don't know, three, four hours a day, but after that training, you need to also, uh, because maybe you spend one year, two years of your life in somewhere. Of course, your first your priority is because you go there to play football, but there is something also besides football. And from, in my point of view, when I was single or I was traveling alone to play, I was just focused on the football wasn't my priority. But now, of course, with a family, with a daughter, with a wife, uh, I want them that they stay happy as well. So for me, for example, before signing in Canada, I was in Saudi Arabia. I was happy there about football-wise and economically and everything. But for our family, for our way of life, of, of it's a difficult country for foreigners. So that's why I, I decided to move even in the football terms, I was happy, you know. You yeah. need to find that balance, as you said before. Yeah, of course. That's Balance is key. So um, the next question I want to ask you is, uh, what's, your, what's your biggest ac accomplishment in, in, in the beautiful game? My accomplice is to still play in the game. Um, to be honest with you, to be able to enjoy, to be in shape, to be healthy right now, um, to meet so many people on my way, coaches, agents, uh, players that I can consider friends, told so many experience, even people not related with football, I, on my way in countries where I never expect to be, uh, thanks to uh, for, uh, of a ball, a football or, or this sport, I met different countries all over the world. Amazing experience that I'll never forget. Yeah. Because to be because um, if you say only about football, okay, I was running up of um, Austrian Cup uh, against Red Bull Salzburg. I play Europe League qualification. I play Champions League qualification. Um, I met my idol and I became friend of him, Xavi Hernandez, when I play in Qatar. Um, or even Cal de Vila uh, is a world champion for Spain. So I met so many like top players and they showed me so many things, even if they didn't try to show me, uh, to, to teach me, like to be in that humble, uh, being a top player like Xavi Hernandez, no? one of the best players we ever have in Spain and even in the world. Yeah. And you speak to him, he's so humble, and, um, so positive. Um, never criticizing another player, always seeing the positive sides of every player, even if that player, believe me, is like not in his level. So these people taught me a lot of, you know, things. Um, and of course, any other player I, 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 I play with since I'm 17 years old, 
and I'm still friends with them. So sometimes, I don't know, I get a call from a player I play with him in Jordan or in Thailand. Even four years uh, later, we haven't spoken. And, and to have, you know, you have maybe a friend in Serbia because you play with him. So have this, for me, is my biggest uh, reward, you know, at the end, mm -hmm. their experience and people that in their path become your friends and they help you all along your way. Yeah, yeah. It's a journey, it's a life experience. Um, you, okay, so you've, you've, you've done it for many, for over a decade. You've played professionally for over a decade. What advice would you, you know, give back? Would you share with the next generation of, of, of soccer players growing up right now? Who would you share with them that want to go pro? Especially with the next generation, as you said, and now it's not like um, my times, I really old. I was going to say our times, but I think you're much younger than me. <laughs> so in, in my time, you were not, uh, you didn't have Instagram, uh, Facebook and Twitter, not so many. We had video games, of course, and I used to play sometimes, but maybe, I don't know, two hours in the weekend, something like that, no more than that. The rest of the time, I was finished my homework because I study also, and it's important, it's another advice, because I know so many sportmen or players that they just put all their effort in, the, in their football or sport career, and they, then they finish with 30, 32, 28, 34, and they don't have anything. I recommend, highly recommend them to study something, whatever they, they like. In my case, I study psychology, which I think is important. Um, for especially for experiment, the, psych, the psychological side. Yeah. But I really recommend us to play, to play and to play. Not only if you train three days a week uh, with your team. No, it's, it's, not, it's not about that. In my opinion, this is important, but it's also really, really important, even more for a youth or for early ages to play in the street, to play with the friends, Every time you have a, a chance to play even by your own, to try different dribbles, uh, shooting, but try as much as you can in the street, wherever you can. Not only those one hour, two hours per day you have in your team. Uh, right now, I think we are losing a little bit that foot, street football, you know, football street on the, like when I was young. So that would be my advice because at the end, if you love the game, you want to play all the time, right? So exactly. if they have uh, the opportunity, just uh, keep playing with friends and we, whatever. Sometimes I have not even, I was not going even with my friends. I just went to the park there when I was even 14, 15 years old. I was already playing a good level, but I, I kept going to the streets and going to the football side parks and, and play there. It were you perform, uh, sorry, you improve your technique and your creativity and your dribbling and everything is my, that's the point I will suggest to, to them. Nice. Those are really great points. And I would ask you, you know what, let me ask you this instead. You're playing in the CPL. Uh, how are you enjoying it right now? I'm enjoying a lot. Um, we have very good chemistry in my team uh, for uh, for these years and Valor. Um, we have very good players, in my opinion. I can say uh, that in, ta in Canada, there is a lot of talent players. Yeah. yeah. It's just about, as you said before, about the jobs, the academies, they need to, in my opinion, to develop more, to improve more, to 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 have more opportunities for the young lads that they're training from uh, now, they are 14, 15 years old. I'm training and coaching a team here in Winnipeg, 15 years old. Oh, nice. And I can see that there is talent there. I can see every day with my players and they have the great attitude to, to train and to improve and they really want to become players. And, and if Canada really builds up a really solid uh, football academy, a football job um, program, it will be a, a big, big step. And, and I really think that Canada needs it. Really, Canada needs it. Uh, they should copy, I don't know, teams in, sorry, countries in Europe, like England, Spain, Italy, uh, for, for long and so many years they are building this program because the key for Spain is this, is that the coaches and the 
and the kids are really prepared even from a really really um, early stages like when they are 10 12 years old they have really good coaches trying to to teach them and i feel that in canada we need more of this we need more coaches more people that knows the game that love the game so i i just want to see it more in the in winnipeg in i don't know in other cities but here in manitoba i want to see uh, a program more solid about develop the, our kids and also in the cpl to have that objective for them that it will be awesome to play them not only for being exposed on the media like we are now with one soccer tsn whatever they saw our games but also economically i hope in the future those players uh we the players um get like higher salaries because at the end we are professional footballers and uh, i hope and i think the cpi is in the right direction but i think um, you need to reward those players that they are making professional with a huge step that you can make a life living because you're a professional player exactly i totally agree with you 100 percent. and jose i i really enjoyed my time interviewing you um let me see right here yeah where so uh anyone that comes across this video the viewers where can they find you oh well, they can find me in uh in instagram uh, is galan jp10 10, 10 with number same in twitter so anyone is interested uh, that i usually post everything related with uh with valor with football um um, also some photography because uh, it's my one of my hobbies so if anyone want to find me i will be there okay jose thank you so much for your time it, it was a pleasure again to interview you and uh let's stay connected yeah for sure thank you so much for the opportunity and of speaking to to you Karen. thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna pause this